Good morning dear students this is your teacher Neela Mehlawat today we will start with a new chapter that is chapter number 12 biotechnology and its applications now in this particular chapter dear students we will be talking about the biotechnological applications in agriculture the applications of biotechnology in medicine transgenic animals and their ethical issues the students we know we have started in the chapter number 11 the biotechnology the applications the places where we use biotechnology isn't it yes and we know that biotechnology is very very important and from that chapter we know that it basically deals with the production of large number of bio pharmaceuticals therapeutics diagnostics it also involves the production of genetically modified crops that are highly useful in the agriculture it helps in processing of food it helps in bio remediation plays an important role in the waste treatment as well as the energy production so we find that biotechnology has expanded its applications into a number of areas but there are three critical research areas in the biotechnology and those three critical areas are first that it provides best catalyst in the form of improved organism using a microbe or a pure enzyme means when we use biotechnology so the improved gene that we insert into the organism it makes that organism better in comparison to the older one secondly it helps to create optimum conditions through which the engineering for a catalyst to act upon a particular substrate can be increased and third it deals with the downstreaming processing technologies to purify a protein before it is being sent to the market so these three are the critical areas research areas in case of biotechnology okay and now we'll start with the biotechnological applications in case of agriculture okay so we'll be talking about the applications of biotechnology in the agriculture dear students we know that biotechnology basically see when the green revolution occurred then the supply of the production of food material it increased three times so with the introduction of the green revolution the supply of the food increased three times but even then this food was not enough to be provided to all other individuals okay we know green revolution occurred that means that that increased the production of the food production food production was increased in india and in, it was observed that production increased by three times but even then that food was not enough to feed the hum, complete human population okay and why this uh, green revolution occurred when this increase in food production occurred because the farmers they were provided with improved crop varieties they were they practiced better management regarding the food production and they also used the agrochemicals the pesticides isn't it the weed sides so with the green revolution there was increase in the amount of agrochemicals plus these agrochemicals they were expensive and they were harmful to the environment okay so keeping in the mind that these agrochemicals that we are using and they are harmful to the environment then it was thought that we should provide another method that could increase the production but it should not uh, cause impact on the environment and that is why the concept of genetically modified crop was there genetically modified organisms was there so in agriculture basically 
the as i told you the food production not only it increased because of the agrochemicals and because of the better management practices but one factor was genetically engineered crops we used genetically engineered crops or the organisms and we also call them as transgenic organisms means the plants okay these are the plants these are the organisms whose genes have been altered by manipulation okay whose genes they have been altered by manipulation they can be plants or they can be the animals also so those organisms they were referred to as genetically modified organisms now with the modification with gmos coming into the function these has particular advantages now these crops now when we are producing the genetically modified crops these crops they are tolerant to abiotic stresses they are they are able to stand the abiotic stresses more in comparison to the older varieties like they can stand cold drought salt and heat conditions they are more resistant to the pest means the loss that occurred because of the pest in case of gmos is very very less so thus we are able to reduce the harvest losses it increase the efficiency of the plants to use the minerals and prevent the exhaustion of the soil fertility it increases the nutritional value of the foods for example the rice that is produced that is that it contains more of vitamin a the genetically modified rice contains more of vitamin a in comparison to the older varieties then these genetically modified crops they are basically they create tailor made plants means they are those plants like tailor cuts your uh, you know cuts the cloth and fits uh, this uh, according to your size similarly scientists they have created such plants that can withstand the conditions and they are the production will increase so these genetically modified crops they are referred to as tailor made plants and uh, so that they will supply the alternative resources to the industry in the form of starch fuel and the certain chemicals which can be used as a pharmaceuticals right i hope you understood the advantages of genetically modified crops okay now as i told you that because of the genetically modified organisms they will have a better pest resistant plants so the better varieties of the plants will be created now these pest resistant plants they will act as bio pesticides means they will not uh, they are not prone to the diseases rather they resist there are less chances that they are affected by any disease like we can have uh, the certain tomatoes available then there's corn which is available then potatoes are available then there are certain flowers also cotton like this bt cotton which i am indicating in the first photograph is a bt cotton and it reduces the need of insecticides thus because the plant does not suffer uh, because a, a lot of diseases suffer from the diseases so the use of insecticides is highly reduced so as i have shown in the picture so different varieties of the genetically modified crops is bt cotton bt corn rice tomato potato and soya bean so etc etc they have been modified and they have been made pest resistant now we'll talk about the examples let's talk about the bt cotton first now bt cotton uh, is as i told you it's a pest resistant plant initially what happens there is a bacteria which is called as bacillus thuringiensis now this bacteria it produces a protein okay it produces a protein that kills insects okay that kills the insects like beetles tobacco budworms the flies and the mosquito okay so bacillus thuringiensis it produces a protein and this protein is in the form of a crystallized protein okay so it produces a protein and that protein is able to kill the disease causing insects okay clear and this particular protein which is referred to as bt toxin this particular chemical which is which kills the proteins is referred to as bt toxin as i told you this is in the crystal form 
and it is only secreted during a particular phase of the growth okay so as this bacteria is growing in a particular phase of the plant okay it will in a particular phase of the growth it will secrete a chemical that is called as bt toxin and it is in the crystallized form right but it will not kill this plant ye is bacteria ko kill nahi karega because it is existing as a inactive prototoxin ye inactive form mein secrete hota hai jaise ki aap yahan par dekh sakte hain this is the bacillus thuringiensis okay which will produce clear which will produce this chemical which is called as bt toxin and it is in crystallized form now when an insect ingests this chemical that is bt toxin then this bt toxin is is activated okay it becomes active because because it becomes soluble in the gut because it becomes soluble in the gut of the insect as there is alkaline ph तो जब इंसेक्ट इसको इंजेस्ट करता है इसे खा लेता है तो ये उसके गट में एक्टिव हो जाती है क्योंकि उसके गट में जो पीएच होता है वो बेसिक होता है सो बिकॉज ऑफ द बेसिक पी एच दैट इज प्रेजेंट इन द गट ऑफ द इंसेक्ट इट बिकम्स सॉलिबल एंड इट बिकम्स एक्टिव ओके देन दिस पर्टिकुलर केमिकल इट विल बाइंड विद द एपिथीलियल सेल्स ऑफ द गट एंड इट विल क्रिएट पोर्स and because of the creation of the pores in the gut that will cause a cells it will cause a swelling in the it will cause lysis and then it will be responsible for the death of the insect so let's see uh, let's understand the help of the uh, photograph dekhiye ye hamara organism hai jisne crystallized form mein hamara bt toxin ko release kiya hai now bt toxin jo hai wo crystallized form mein hai jab koi bhi insect usko engulf karega to jab wo uske gut se pass hogi okay uske gut mein pass hogi to yahan par jo ph hai wo basic ph hai सो बेसिक पी होने की वजह से ये क्रिस्टलाइज जो है यहाँ पे सॉल्यूबल हो जाएगा एक्टिवेट हो जाएगा और एक्टिवेट होने से ये उसके एपिथीलियल सेल्स के साथ बाइंड कर जाएगा एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दिस इट विल स्टार्ट क्रिएटिंग पोर्स यहाँ पर पोर्स क्रिएट हो जाएंगे और पोर्स की वजह से वहाँ पे स्वेलिंग हो जाएगी एंड दिस इंसेक्ट विल डाई ओके अंडरस्टूड राइट दीज आर द एपिथीरियल सेल्स इन प्रता प्रेजेंट द मिड गट तो ये टॉक्सिन जो है इन इन सेल्स के साथ बाइंड कर जाएगी ओके okay, बाइंड करेगी और इन सेल्स के अंदर अब आप देखेंगे आफ्टर सम टाइम इस आफ्टर दिस फेनोमेना यू विल फाइंड द देर आर पोर्स विल बी क्रिएट इन टू दो सेल्स तो इन सेल्स के अंदर पोर की क्रिएशन हो जाएगी जैसे कि आप देख पा रहे हो पोर्स क्रिएट हो गए हैं यहाँ पे पोर्स क्रिएट होने के बाद ये सेल्स डेड हो जाएंगे स्वेलिंग हो जाएगी इनके अंदर एंड दीज सेल्स दे विल बिकम डेड so the organisms or you can say the insects that will eat this kind of uh, plant will die okay now first of all these bt toxin genes they were first isolated from a strain which is referred to as b thuringiensis and then they were incorporated into the cotton plant तो सबसे पहले वो इस स्पीशीज़ के अंदर से आइसोलेट किए गए और फिर वो कॉटन प्लांट के अंदर इंट्रोड्यूस किए गए ओके एंड ज़्यादा तो जो इंसेक्ट हैं जो बीटी कॉटन को खाते हैं बीटी टी जो हैं वो बहुत ग्रुप स्पेसिफिक होती हैं दे आर वेरी स्पेसिफिक टू दैट दोज एंजाइम्स एंड दिस टॉक्सिक एंजाइम दिस बी टी टॉक्सन इट इज़ कोडेड बाई अ जीन विच इज़ रेफर टू एज क्राई ओके जो जीन ये प्रोटीन uh, इनकोड करती है क्रिस्टलाइज प्रोटीन जो कि बी टी टॉक्सिन है जो केमिकल है जो इंसेक्ट्स को किल करता है वो जीन है आपकी क्राई सो क्राई वन ए सी एंड क्राई सेकेंड ए बी दे कंट्रोल दी बुल वॉम्स दे किल दी बुल वॉम्स वाइल दी क्राई वन ए बी इट विल इट विल कंट्रोल द कॉर्न बोरर्स उन उन एनिमल्स को जो कि कॉर्न को बोर करते हैं उसको ईट कर दे खा लेते हैं फिनिश कर देते हैं दे बोर इन टू द कॉर्न प्लांट they are uh, they finish with this they bring about resistance to these so there are uh, you can say three types of cry can be cry gene can be categorized to three type cry 1ac cry 1ab and cry second ab so cry 1ac and cry second ab it controls the bullworms cotton bullworms and cry 1ab it can it controls your corn bearers coming to a nematode resistance in tobacco plant there is a nematode named as 
Melodigna incognita. Okay, this is a name, scientific name of the nematode, Melodigna incognita. Now, this nematode, it infects the tobacco plant and it destroys the roots of this plant. And thus, the yield of this plant is highly reduced. So, this is your nematode, it finishes the tobacco roots. So, the plant is dead and the plant production decreases from the plant. This is the nematode and this is your tobacco plant. So it will bore into the roots of the tobacco plant and will, it will uh, make the, it will eat the roots and uh, the plant will become dead and thus the crop production will be highly reduced. So for this process a very novel strategy is used so that the production can be increased. And this technique is called as RNA interference and in short we indicate it as RNAi. So this technique is called as RNA interface. Okay. Now during this method what happens, now basically this method, is, this is a method which acts as a cellular defense, it provides cellular defense to fight with the various diseases. Now in this process, what do we do? This basically this technique, this mRNA ke translation ko stop kar deti hai. Okay? It stops. What basically happens? Hame pata hai, uh, that we know that from DNA, mRNA is produced. We know that we make DNA from mRNA. Banate hai, right? And as mRNA is processing, hoti hai, then it forms the other proteins. So what basically is done here? Jo mRNA is produced. What do we do with this? Let's use a different yellow color. What do we do with this? What do we do with this? We bind the DNA molecule with a DNA molecule. Bind kara एक आरएनए मॉल सॉरी नॉट आरएनए मॉलिक्यूल के को इसके साथ बाइंड करा देते हैं सो एमआरएनए मॉलिक्यूल हैज बीन प्रोड्यूस्ड नाउ दिस एमआरएनए मॉलिक्यूल इट इट इज मेड टू बाइंड विद द डबल स्टैंडर्ड आरएनए मॉलिक्यूल इसको हम डबल स्टैंडर्ड आरएनए मॉलिक्यूल के साथ बाइंड करा देते हैं एंड दिस प्रोसेस इज कॉल्ड एज साइलेंसिंग हमने एमआरएनए जो हमारा प्रोड्यूस हुआ था उस एमआरएनए के साथ डबल स्टैंडर्ड आरएनए को बाइंड करा दिया है नाउ दिस एमआरएनए कैन नॉट परफॉर्म द Translation process. Now, this translation can't be made. Proteins can't be made. Okay? Now, first, uh, this, and, and the source. This is the complementary DNA. We have double-stranded RNA bind. This is the first thing. Where did it This has been obtained from the RNA viruses or the mobile genetic elements which are called as transposons. Transposons, they are also called as jumping genes. तो जो कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री डबल स्ट्रैंडेड आरएनए हमने एमआरएनए के साथ बाइंड कराया है वो हम ऑप्टेन करते हैं आरएनए वायरसेस से या थ्रू ऑन ट्रांसपोजोन से थ्रू द रेप्लिकेशन प्रोसेस ओके रेप्लिकेशन प्रोसेस से हम वो कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री डबल स्ट्रैंडेड आरएनए ऑप्टेन कर लेते हैं और फिर इस डबल स्ट्रैंडेड आरएनए को हम एमआरएनए से बाइंड करा देते हैं दिस प्रोसेस कॉल साइलेंसिंग अब एमआरएनए जो है वो ट्रांसलेशन में पार्टिसिपेट नहीं कर सकता है ओके okay? Right. Now, what then? What was then did? Did agrobacterium vectors? They were used, okay. And these nematode-specific genes they were introduced into the host plant. अब क्या किया गया कि हमने agrobacterium vectors को use किया और जो nematode-specific genes हैं इनको हमने host plant के अंदर introduce कर दिया. Now these uh, nematode-specific genes or the DNA that was introduced hot introduced into the host plant, it will code for both. It will have both sense DNA as well as anti-sense RNA. Okay. Now these two RNAs, they are complementary to each other. Okay. These two RNAs, they will be complementary to each other. So they will bind to form a double-stranded RNA. So these two will bind and make a double-stranded RNA. Now we use double-stranded RNA with this nematode. Okay. Clear? Clear? हमने डबल स्ट्रैंडेड आरएनए कैसे ऑप्टेन किया हमने एग्रोबैक्टीरियम वेक्टर्स को यूज किया उनके उनके अंदर डीएनए स्पेसिफिक जीन्स नेमेटोड स्पेसिफिक जीन्स को इंट्रोड्यूस किया ठीक है दोनों ही सेंस और एंटी सेंस आरएनए वहां प्रोड्यूस हुए होस्ट सेल के अंदर और दोनों ही जो आरएनए प्रोड्यूस हो रहे हैं इनको हमने बाइंड करा दिया जिससे कि हमारे पास डबल स्ट्रैंडेड आरएनए प्रोड्यूस हो जाए एंड नाउ दिस डबल स्ट्रैंडेड आरएनए विल बी यूज्ड फॉर इंटरफेयर आरएनए इंटरफेरेंस Okay, and thus this parasite cannot survive in the transgenic host. And this parasite is not survive in the transgenic host. Mein hai. 
क्लियर सो नाउ योर प्लांट विल बी हेल्दी अब आपका जो प्लांट है डबैको प्लांट इट विल बी हेल्दी वाइल इन अदर कंडीशन इट वॉज इट वॉज बींग डिस्ट्रॉयड बाय दी नेमेटोड ओके सो दिस इज अगेन वन ऑफ द एग्जाम्पल्स वे पेस्ट रेजिस्टेंट वेराइटीज दे आर मोर सूटेबल एज दे आर दे आर प्रिवेंटेड फ्रॉम डिजीजेज so if we if we grow such type of plants in our in our crop in our crop fields then invariably i can say that the production will automatically increase and we'll be using less amount of chemicals in our fields okay any doubt beta ji okay so i hope you understood these two particular phenomena i have given you two examples one of the nematode resistance and second is the bt cotton so if you have any doubt you can ask me okay so we'll be doing this much today so you'll be making notes of this topic and you'll be uh, reading the page numbers 207 to 209 and if there is any doubt any query that you feel you need to discuss you can contact me okay okay beta ji then bye everyone